If you want to export a dataset you have created using V7 for model training, there are four ways of doing so. And those are using the V7 UI, command line interface, SDK or REST API. Let's go ahead and look at how to use all four of these methods to export any data in the supported formats. Why not start with the simplest method, using the UI. When looking at my birth dataset here, we can see that some images are completed and have annotations, and some don't. Out of these 79 complete annotations, I have samples of African grey parrots, European robins and nightingales. Now, to export this dataset, we simply need to click on the Export Data button in the upper right corner. We can now create a new export version. We hereby need to specify the version name and can select one annotation format out of the supported ones. We now need to decide whether we want to export the data that actually has complete annotations, only specifically selected files, or all data given a specific filter. We can of course create multiple different export versions of the same dataset. These can be used for model training as a way of creating training experiments between different versions or as a form of version control. From here on we can directly download the annotations with one click from the browser or we can copy the command line interface command and download the whole dataset including images that way. We now have pulled our dataset into our Darwin datasets directory on our local machine. And it's as simple as that. Let's now look at how to export data using the SDK. As with any script or code that you write, the first thing that you want to do is import your dependencies. Now in this example, we'll just look at the functionalities of the specific modules when actually using them. So let's go ahead and import our dependencies and we arrive at this specific cell here. Now we somehow need to connect to v7 and authorize ourselves using our API key. And there are multiple different versions of course. For example, you could directly provide your API key when using the client module. But in this case, we are using our local authorization. This can be set up very simply using the command line interface. And there you'll be asked to provide your API key and everything will be stored in a config file on your local machine. So let's create our client module with our local authorization to have an interface with v7. Now that we have our client set up, we can now actually get access to our dataset. We're therefore going to use the method called getRemoteDatasets and we need to provide our team name or team slug, in this case Boris Minardus, that's me, and we need to provide the dataset that we want to access. We'll again use our birds dataset. What we end up with is a dataset manager with which we have access to our remote dataset. And this one we can use to then create our specific export version. We therefore again just specify a release name. In this, in this case we'll call it v one all SDK just to again differentiate between the different versions and know that this one was created using the SDK. And if we run, if we run this cell, nothing will print out but we'll have created a release name. And we can actually verify that by looking into our UI. If we go to our export data, and we'll see that we have actually created an export called v one all SDK. Now, we have created this export, but we haven't actually pulled anything. That is what we'll do in the next cell. In this cell, we'll be using a while true loop and always be waiting for 10 seconds for v7 to actually create the export version, because depending on the filter complexity or the size of the dataset, it might take a bit on v7's side. But once everything is set up, we simply can again use our dataset manager and get the release by providing the specific release name. If we don't provide a release name, it will just take the latest version of this dataset, of the export. In our case, in this specific instance, again, our latest version is our v1 all SDK version, but you know, you get the point. Okay, so now we have our interface to our release and therefore we can actually download it into a zip file. And let me just run this cell and we'll see at um, the results. Let's wait for a second for this to happen and we'll see each other again in a bit. So that went pretty fast and we can now also verify that we actually have downloaded our data by going into our directory and we can here see that we have our zip file, we can unzip our data and we here have our directory with all our annotations. Great, so now let's look at how we can do pretty much the same but using the REST API. So again, let's import our dependencies. As we're working with the REST API, we only need our requests module. 
and also our API key that I have stored in a separate file to not share my API key. Okay, after that is done, we need to define which dataset we actually want to target. For that, we again use the exact same team name or team slug as before, and we'll again be targeting the exact same dataset as before. Those two parameters will be plugged into the URL that we'll be then requesting from, and we'll continue to the next cell. As you can see, the amount of code that we need is really not that much. We again specify our release name, which in this case will be v1 all rest to specify that we're using the rest api and that we are now using a filter which was a fun little thing okay so the header is pretty much always the same we need to specify which format we are accepting with our responses we then also define which content type we are working with ourselves and then we also need to provide the api key for authorization now in the payload we again have a few parameters that we can specify for example, the format, which file format we are working with, and if we want to include authorship or not. If this is set to true, we'll provide the metadata of every annotator for the respective annotations. We then can also specify whether or not we want to include export tokens. And what those export tokens are is it's, an, it's appending the URL with a specific export token that then allows pretty much any user, whether they have v7 or not, access to the original image. When setting this to true, be aware that your data is not encrypted anymore. Okay, we now also have, of course, the release name and the filters. In this case, I have just selected the filter item name contains, which just says that the name of the specific image contains this specific sequence of numbers or just characters, right? And this is really helpful if in your dataset your images already follow a specific naming convention and that way you can just directly filter through your images. And that's pretty much it. Let's just run the cell and look at the export version that we have created. Just Let's just pull in again our UI. Let's refresh. And we can see we have our V1 all rest with the filter applied. And this is only one image in this data set, or in this export version rather, because only one image actually contains this string that I've provided in the filter. Now, this hasn't really pulled any data yet. It has only created the export version. Now, to pull this data, there are again the different versions that we talked about, directly pulling from the UI with the download button, copying the command line interface command, or again using the SDK or just using the REST API itself. So to use the REST API, we simply want to get a list of all the export versions that we have, and those export versions will include a download URL. So as you can see, we have now received our list of all the different download versions. In this case, the first one it lists out is v1 all. And what we would want to do is we would just click on the link or access the link and that will automatically download our zip file as it as we have done in the sdk approach and that's it we have pulled our export version and actually that was it for the whole video you now know how to quickly export datasets from v7 i hope this video helped you out with getting started with v7